Hello everyone, I am Akif and today we are doing our second video on wireless sensor networks. In the previous video we introduced various wireless networks and we discussed various kinds of wireless networks. But today we will only discuss about wireless sensor networks. And uh, in the previous video we discussed about uh, WPAN and it's also in the category of IEEE 802.15.4 so wireless sensor network falls in this category of wireless networks um, and it's slowly and gradually becoming a part of our daily lives and you can see them present everywhere in hospitals in our cameras uh, in schools um, in uh, some places which are meant for agricultural stuff and when we deploy them in our area of interest it may be uh, the agricultural land it may be a forest it may even be an enemy land uh, to gather some information it's meant for measuring the physical parameters like temperature pressure sounds chemical composition or even uh, detect the presence of some enemy vehicles uh, like tanks and all that stuff. When a wireless sensor network was in its infancy, it it was meant only for military purposes. No one ever thought that it will become the part of our daily lives. Uh, it will have a wide applications. So for the first time, it was used by the United States Defense Advanced Research Project agency DARPA in 1980s and it was at that time called distributed sensor networks uh, but uh, from 2001 onwards it gained some attention uh, computer scientists who were obsessed with wireless sensor networks they began to come up with algorithms and methods that would increase the energy efficiency of the wireless sensor network uh, to improve the energy efficiency and to improve the lifespan of the batteries that we use in the wireless sensor networks is one of the growing research areas now wireless sensors are currently used in various walks of life like industries and healthcare household applications we have them in our cars in cameras in mobile phones and uh, when you talk about the wireless personal area networks we have them in our a mouse in our devices and gadgets um, they're just everywhere when we deploy these sensors in any area of interest they are just scattered and they form the network that's why it's called wire sensor network and each sensor can play a role which we will discuss later in some other video and in each sensor we can uh, see some components which are like transceiver power source microcontroller external memory and we'll discuss them one by one so what is a power source power source in order to understand power source, we need to uh, understand uh, why uh, a battery is uh, important. A battery is important because this is a hardware which is busy all the time gathering the information. Uh, so sensors are there to gather the information and when we have deployed these sensors in some remote place which is unreachable, the terrain is uh, difficult uh, to reach so what we do is that we find some m methods uh, to prolong the lifespan of the battery and how do we do that we uh, come up with some methods that will allow these uh, sensors to uh, renew uh, the energy from uh, solar sources temp temperature difference or vibration then we have transceiver so when we combine the functionality of both transmitter and receiver into a single device that's called as transceiver and each wireless sensor network node uh, it consists of a radio transceiver with an internal antenna or a connection to an external antenna so what is a sensor as we discussed earlier a sensor is a hardware device that is meant to gather the information from the external environment or the environment where it is present 
it can gather the information or measure the physical parameters like temperature, pressure or chemical compositions. Then controller. Whenever we talk about a controller or processor, we think about the processors that are used in desktop or laptop computers. 98% of the processors uh, aren't used in desktop computers and laptop computers. They are used in these sensors and these allow the processing capabilities in the wireless sensor network. And what they do is that they control the functionality of other components in the sensor node. And what's an external memory? The most relevant kind of memory that you can think of is the memory present in the microcontroller. But sometimes, in rare cases, we also have off-chip RAM, which is rarely used. They are very much application dependent. So that was all for today. In the coming videos, we will discuss about the topology and how these sensors are deployed in areas of interest, so how do we deploy them in forests, how we deploy them in the seas and oceans, and how we deploy them in some other places. We will also discuss about the difference between the network we are familiar with and kind of network that is formed by these sensors. So thanks for watching, and if you really found that these videos were useful, like it, subscribe to our channel, and share